Hey everybody, welcome back to the tutorial series on the Cinelink LiveLink plugin for Unreal Engine. In the previous video, we showed you how to install and activate Cinelink, and in this video, we're going to actually show you how to connect to a camera and start using some of the data from cinema cameras in real time. So once activated, uh, Cinelink is just like any other LiveLink plugin. So we can go up to Window, Virtual Production, LiveLink, and we can add our various sources here. Now in this case, I have a red camera in front of me. I have a red Raptor. So I'm just gonna type in the IP of the camera. Now, uh, actually, before I do this, one thing I'll mention here is if you go to the documentation website at lowlitvirtual.com slash documentation, uh, you, can type, you can go to the bottom here at Cinelink plugin, and we actually have specific instruction guides on how to connect to various cameras. So uh, right now, again, it's just area in red, but we have written instructions as to where to go in the menus to access uh, the connection data, to get the uh, password, things like that. So I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna connect a red RCP2 camera here. Uh, 50 is the IP here. I'm gonna hit okay. You can see it immediately pops up, no problem at all. And um, we're good to go at this point. Now, typical live link rules apply here, right? So if you want this to load by default, you need to save this as a preset, and then you need to go into your project settings and you need to uh, set your default live link preset here, right? Uh, this is exactly typical uh, how you know, any other live link setup works, and the same thing applies here. Once we have this, this comes in as a uh, camera subject, so we could just find a camera here. And, uh, now, you, again, on a virtual production stage, you're probably already going to have a live link controller for your tracking system. You can add multiple though, so that's totally fine. In this case, I don't have a tracking system hooked up, so I'm just going to use the one that's already here. I'm going to select red, and we are already updating here. So you can see we've actually, I have a 28 millimeter um, uh, Canon RF lens on the camera just to get some data. So you can see the 28s come up. The camera is in fact set to uh, 2.8 aperture. Now, if there are any parameters you don't want it to update, all you need to do is come here to uh, camera roll, settings, update flags, and you can just uncheck any of these things. This is if you want to override them manually, uh, just uncheck what you don't want it to update. So if I actually go into my camera component here, uh, we can see, I'm just gonna sort of update the aperture on the camera and we should see that update here. Yep, so I'm gonna go to 5.6, right? And it's automatically updates live. If I had a zoom, you would see the focal length changing as well. And we also have uh, some focus data. Now what I will say is that the red RF lens focus data is not awesome. You can see kind of jittering around a little bit. If we had a proper PL mount with a PL lens, you would actually get some more accurate data. But again, it just sort of shows you that it's updating. Now, there is actually more data inside of the LiveLink uh, component that is uh, not directly accessible through the native LiveLink camera system. So this includes things like white balance and gen lock status, uh, tint, ISO, shutter speed, stuff like that. Now, why may you want this data? Well, if you're not on a LED stage, if you're shooting green screen, this data is obviously super helpful because you can match your uh, virtual camera with your practical camera. If you're recording data for, VF for VFX purposes, you can just record the live link subject and have that reference data as well. You can also use it for creative purposes. So we can actually control the white balance of a light with the white balance of a camera. Pretty cool. Um, and in this case, let's go ahead. Let's show you the example of controlling a light. So, what I'm going to do is actually create a uh, blueprint class that is a point light. Point, sorry, because I have a camera on my lap. Uh, point light. Now, if you wanted to uh, control a camera, you could make this a cine camera actor. If you wanted this to be just a neutral thing, you could just make a regular actor. It doesn't really matter. In this case, I'm going to make a point light here. Um, okay, thanks. Thanks, autosave. That was awesome. Uh, I'm going to open this up. I'm going to go ahead and add a, a live link controller here. Now, uh, I'm going to go now to the event graph. Now, if I click on the live link controller and I go to the details panel on the right, I can scroll down and I can see that I can add an event called on live link updated. So I can click that. Now, anytime live link gets new data, it's going to update here. So I'm going to break this out. I'm gonna go, it's a little bit weird because it's not really gonna show up. So you just have to type in evaluate live link frame. Here is where you're gonna choose your subject. So in this case, I'm gonna choose this. It's gonna automatically pick up that it's a camera roll. And now in Cinelink, 
kind of in the code, we include some nice helper methods here. So what I'm actually gonna do is just type in Cinelink. I'm gonna just go make Cinelink values from frame data. And then this is just gonna, oops, sorry. There's one more, one more layer, we gotta break it out here. So I'm gonna pull out data result and I'm just gonna type in break. There we go. And now I get the frame data that I'm gonna plug into here. And then once again, I'm gonna break this. And now we get all of these wonderful values. So um, just to sort of verify that it's working, what I'm gonna do is just print the, uh, let's call it, just forget this, print color temp. Great, so now I'm just gonna, it's just gonna log the color temp as it comes in. To actually have this work, we need to add it into the scene, of course, to actually call the class. You can see 5600, as I adjust it, uh, it is adjusting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and edit this now. And we can see that we actually have data coming in. So now let's go ahead and actually control the color tempo of this light source with the white balance. So I'm gonna drag out my uh, point light component. I'm gonna search for temp, just to get the set temperature node here. I'm gonna plug that in, plug this in, compile save, I can close out of here. Now if I go back here, make sure you check use temperature, set to 56 as I change it. Yeah, pretty cool. So now I'm changing the white balance of the camera and it's changing the color temper of the light. Pretty neat, huh? Now there's other data in here as well. So if I edit this again, you can see we have things like the tint, the ISO, shutter speed, and also the camera record state and sync state. So I don't know, let's do something cool and let's actually start to, uh, let's actually turn on the light if the camera's rolling and turn off the light if the camera is, uh, is not rolling. So what I'm gonna do is just add a variable called is rolling. So the first thing we want to do is check if this record state actually equals the uh, the previous record state. We're gonna set is rolling at the very end here. And this just means that we only want it to act if it has changed, if it has just started or just stopped. Otherwise, we're gonna be setting the value every single frame and we're gonna be uh, probably crashing Unreal. It likes to do that. We'll branch this off. So if in fact they are not equal, then let's see, what's the best way to do this here? Is there a, just a enable, set enable is component? No, let's just, let's just set the intensity. Um, if they're not equal, then we actually need to check what the record state actually is. So we'll add another branch. Doink. So this branch is now our, uh, is rolling or is not rolling. So if we're not rolling, we'll just set the intensity to zero. And if we are rolling, we'll just set it to, I don't know, 100. Sounds good to me. I'm just gonna use the same note for both. Now the last thing we need to do, super important, is we need to actually set is rolling to the value. That way we actually, uh, once the camera setting changes, we actually have something accurate to compare against here. So here we go. I'm gonna go here. Now I think I'm just gonna set the intensity to zero to start off with. Right, now I'm gonna go ahead and record. And our intensity goes up to one. I stop, and goes down to zero. How cool is that? Pretty sweet, right? So, tons of cool possibilities here. In a future video, we're actually gonna show you how to get this set up with the Unreal Take Recorder system. It's a little bit weird, but you know we're gonna do our best to explain it. That way, you can actually start Take Recorder automatically when the camera starts and stops. Super, super cool. Stay tuned for that.